Hi, it's Daniel Murphy, and I'd like to use this video to demonstrate a technique I call rip cut rigging. You can see the large oak in the foreground there is a tree that's being removed. It's got bacterial leaf scorch. All the uh, branches and limbs growing out over the street are fairly straightforward, just drop them right into the street. It's not an issue. So once that side gets stripped off, the challenge on this tree is going to be rigging off the leaves on the back side of the tree that are growing over that Japanese maple there. Branches are growing very close and actually into and through the canopy and directly over the canopy. So we have to swing all those limbs out away from the Japanese maple. This establishing shop is a real optical illusion. That tree is really a lot bigger than it looks in this picture. This shot taken from the bucket truck shows you a better angle to see just how big that tree is. Notice this cut, the upper right hand side of your screen there, that cut shows an example of the rip cut rigging. There's no undercut, it's just a straight top cut. Let's take a look at how the rigging is set up here. That red block is set up on the central lead. We have a satellite rigging point natural crotch out there over a nice little drop zone. Here's another shot, a reverse shot of that same rigging setup after we've made a few cuts. This shot should also give you a better idea of exactly how big that tree is. And this is why I like that satellite rigging point. There's plenty of room in that drop zone to lower out big pieces. So the whole point of this video is to demonstrate rip cut rigging. What that means is that the cuts that are made, there are going to be no undercuts or notches. It's just a straight top cut. And what's crucial here is to make that top cut into the branch union, not just in straight grain wood, but in that branch union where there is a nice strong bonding between the wood fibers, it's not going to split out on you too quickly. And that's going to create a slow motion as a branch begins to rip. It's also going to make a nice clean cut where you don't have to make any flush cuts on the ground or handle any stubs. So that makes it a lot easier just to make a straight top cut. No knots, no worrying about matching your face cuts, no worrying about pinching your bar on an, a too deep an undercut. So it's not only an easier cut, but it saves time. With the amount of cuts that are made on a big tree like this, you're saving maybe 30 seconds or more on each cut. That really adds up over the course of the day. As well as when the log gets on the ground or those big leads get on the ground, they're already flushed off. You don't have to spend any time on the ground to trim the log and handle the stubs. So it does make a big difference in efficiency as well as making it actually safer because of the way that these pieces move into the rigging in a slow and gentle manner. This is the first branch we cut. You can see the rip cut on your left side there shows that there was just a top cut and the branch hanging there has the rip piece on it. Unfortunately, we didn't get this on video, but you can clearly see how the piece ripped off the trunk in this situation. Now look at the lower branch there that's growing right out over the Japanese maple. That's the next branch that's going to go, and it's a fairly big one. This is really a very good example of the movement of this branch, how you can rig a big piece, how you can swing it out using a rip cut much better than using an undercut or a notch. It's right over top of that Japanese maple. Fairly large oak limb. You're going to see how the piece moves into the rigging very slowly and easily without any shock load at all. Very important for handling big pieces like this. Let's take a look. Now let's take another look at that same cut. Again, we don't have a close-up showing the cut, but you can just hear from the sound of the saw. It's a straight top cut. Into the shoulder is very important. It makes the action and the ripping much slower. It moves slowly onto the rigging. Now I have to come back and finish the cut. It takes another couple of seconds, but most important thing here on a big piece like this is just get slow down movement, and there it is. No shock load whatsoever. Very safe way to take a big piece out. Now here's the next limb that's getting rigged out. This limb is tied off actually at or above the level of our rigging point. It's directly over top of the Japanese maple. 
So this is another big limb, and it's going to have to swing a long way, which concerns me when it comes to shock loading. One of the things that making a top cut only allowed me to do in this situation was to boom up and over top of the rigging line rather than coming un through the triangle, putting myself underneath that rigging line in case there was to be any failure in that natural crotch, I wouldn't be putting myself in danger. Let's take another look at that in slow motion. You can see how far I'm bending over. That's a 46 with a 24 inch bar. I'm bending way over out of the bucket to reach down and make that top cut only. If I had to make an undercut on that branch, I would have to boom underneath the rigging line. So the rip cut not only allows a slower general motion, but in this situation, it allowed me to position myself in a much safer place. And here's the before shot showing that big lead over the Japanese maple. After the cut's been made, the rip on the trunk and the line hanging there, and there's the same limb hanging in the drop zone. It looks a lot bigger on the ground than it does in the air. And here's the last limb that we're swinging out to the right side. But after this, we're gonna switch ends with the rigging line, put a block up there where the natural crotch was on the right-hand side in case we have to lift anything out. And all those limbs out over the Japanese maple are gonna have to swing to the left side of that main trunk. This is another example of an important use of the rip cut. In this situation, that limb is tied off to my left and the rigging point is to my right. So that limb that I'm about to cut is going to want to swing right back at me. And I'm going to use a combination of a rip cut and a lower limb, leaving that lower limb intact. So when the piece begins to swing, it stops on that lower limb, stopping it, as well as the, the rip. So I still have to cut the final piece of, of the, the limb there, and then I have to cut that lower limb. And watch, it'll just swing out nice and gentle. So the rip cut enabled me in part to stop the swing of that large limb towards the boom. Very important. In this situation, again, I wish I had a close-up to show you. I wanted to, to encourage this branch to go left by making my cut from right to left on the limb. So the last little bit of holding wood on that rip is on the left side. I'm in a safe position because I'm boomed out to the right of the rigging point there and the right of that main stem. I could have easily made a notch or an undercut there and it would have gone the same way most likely. It's just a little quicker to not have to fool with that and just make a straight cut. I left this lower limb intact so that as this top limb swung out, it wouldn't, the lower limb would stop it from damaging the maple tree. And so there it is, it's jammed up, and I'm gonna have to piece it out, cut it a, a one section at a time and throw it down. So now I'm working on that final lowest limb growing over and actually through the top of the Japanese maple. That Japanese maple has the red leaves on it. The green leaves, the higher canopy just behind me is actually a large oak that's in the backyard. Those lower limbs, I'm piecing them out. And uh, once the very tips come off of that branch, I'll be able then to swing it out without damaging the maple. Making a rip cut, in this case I was trying to leave wood on the left side I was expecting this piece to swing left but this one did not go as planned the lowering line was set up it was pulling this piece straight back so it did not want to go left and I just kept nibbling away nibbling away nibbling away so finally it dropped again this was not expected not what I wanted I had wanted it to swing left fortunately it would have fell out of there it didn't do any damage that was unexpected and a lesson to be learned this I'm making a slight undercut. There's no actual notch here, but it's just a slight undercut and a top cut to start piecing out some of this bigger wood. It's good to keep it tip heavy so there's the rips down and moves down and away from the climber. And here's that same piece, that same cut you can see on the ground. It's a fairly big piece of wood. And just a quick, easy cut, top cut, no knots necessary.
So here I'm piecing out the rest of that limb that we had the satellite rigging point on, the last piece of tree to go beside the top. And I'm again just making straight top cuts here, letting it rip down. Fairly quick and simple cuts here. The one thing, it's not a problem, it's a short piece of wood like that, but you don't want to make those rip cuts when you're wrecking a tree on long limbs that are possibly going to hinge right at the rip and then lean up against the tree. And now if you a 30 foot limb and you're 30 feet in the tree, you have a huge limb sticking 30 feet up in the air. And how do you get that down safely on the ground? Even with a skid loader, it can be a very dangerous operation. So that's one thing to keep in mind, but in general, this is a very quick, easy cut to make. I'm just making a top cut right through the, the shoulder of that branch union there, and the piece falls out, and the, the log is trimmed, and there's no need to do any more work with the piece. It's one and done. Now we're going to take a look at some other video. This guy's taking down a big redwood. He just liked the leaf stubs. He shouldn't have let that piece come right across his leg. That's a, not the point of this video. There are so many limbs on this redwood tree. Every time he leaves a stub, he's going to have to do something with it. Or the guys in the ground are going to have to do something with it. So that extra time to trim those stubs really adds up when there's so many limbs like this. Not to mention the fact that those stubs get in the way of the climbing, get in the way of the rigging. He, if the spikes kick out, he could knock a few teeth out of one of those stubs. And look, all these limbs are getting jammed up on the way down because he left the stubs. No stubs doesn't mean cutting a stub and then flush cutting it. It means flush cutting from the start. So look how much time he's taking to make the undercut here. So undercut, he looks down, he's wasting all his time, makes the top cut, now he's going one-handed again, not recommended, and the piece hangs up. The point is, rather than wasting all that time on every single branch here, if he had just set his rigging point up in the right place, he could be making rip cuts in the shoulder, no undercut, no notch. He wouldn't have to be fooling around like this, and the guys on the ground wouldn't have to be handling all these stubs. A few extra seconds every time he's making a cut here is no good. And then what's going to happen to these stubs? In this case, he's left them on the trunk, and someone's going to have to handle them on the ground. Cut them off and pick them up and throw them in the back of the truck. It's a waste of time. Here's a different tree. And you can see he didn't show us the undercut there, but he definitely made it undercut. So he's taking the time to make his undercut. Again, one handed, not a good practice. And now he's got to cut that stub off. And it's falling to the ground, and someone's going to have to pick it up. That's one time he, the ground man's going to have to bend over, pick an extra thing up that he didn't need to. Now look what happens on this one. He's got himself all jammed up here. That big, heavy limb. Now the sling is hung up on the stub. Totally unnecessary. And rather than just clutch cut it now, he decides he's going to go down and piece out that branch. Cut it one at a time. Knock those branches off. He's edited out cutting most of those limbs. Look below him. You can see there's branches hanging up. So he made it a dangerous situation. He's wasted all that time having to go back down. And now he's got a hung up branch over the work zone. Here, let's take a look at a different tree, a different climber. This guy's got a better idea here. He's making a notch very close to the trunk of the tree. He's going to swing these branches out on the rigging. He's making a notch, kind of a side cut there. And you can see his lanyard is underneath the limb there. He's making his top cut, and this branch is going to swing out. Number one, you don't want to use a rip cut if your lanyard's underneath the limb, you, especially on big, heavy stuff. You don't want your lanyard in a situation where... That rip can tear down and pin your body against two very dangerous situations. However, let's look at the time he's using to make these side cuts here, these notches, and he's, and he's going to inspect them visually now. Now, if he never didn't need to, to look under there, he wouldn't need to have his lanyard underneath the, the limb like that. If he kept his lanyard above the limb, he could just make a top cut, and it would swing out just as well. This piece is a nice, this is a nice cut. Watch it. It swings out, just brushes the roof. No damage, and then comes nicely into the drop zone right behind the chipper. That's a well done piece of rigging. However, it just wasn't necessary to make that undercut there. Now, there are times when it is necessary to use a notch or an undercut, and this is one of them. He's out on a limb, he's got no other place to put his lanyard but below the cut. He better have a notch there. Otherwise, that piece could rip down into his lanyard. You definitely want to avoid this as you're, if you're a climber. And that was in a situation that's no big deal. He took the time to put a notch in there. It's fine. 
And here's another situation where he's probably better off using a notch. This branch is fairly vertical. And if he goes, tries to just rip cut it, it could possibly barber chair, leaving a big limb above him, possibly falling down on his head. You definitely want to avoid that. So there are definitely times when you need to use a notch to steer a piece or to prevent it from ripping down into your, the rigging or ripping down into your lanyard or a situation like this where you don't want the barber chair. There's definitely times, many times when you need to use a notch. And knowing the times when you do and when you don't is part of developing yourself into a great climber. So let's get back and take a look at that first tree that I started on in the beginning of the video. Now here is the first notch on this whole removal so far. Here we need the notch. We need to control the direction of fall of this piece so it lands in the street. It doesn't hit the bush. It doesn't hit the maple. It doesn't hit the truck. I know this piece is going to go where it's supposed to go. Now the width of the notch is going to help determine how that piece falls. We want it to fall tip first so that the force of that fall gets spread out amongst all those branches and it doesn't dent up or scratch up the road. So here is the second and last notch that we cut on this tree. I hope you enjoyed watching the video. I was always taught to undercut everything with weight and I did it without really understanding why or what would happen if I didn't. And it wasn't until I experimented with using these rip cuts that I found how useful they were. I hope you find them useful as well. Be safe out there. Thanks for watching.